Welcome to Amateur Baseball Today, a comprehensive recap of the state amateur tournament. Today's show is presented by the Minnesota Baseball Association and its partners. Rinders, turf and landscaping solutions and supplies. Max Bats, the official wood bat of the NBA. And Amy Electronics, scoreboards and digital displays. Hello everyone and welcome to Amateur Baseball Today, presented by the NBA. I'm Ryan Phelps. We're coming to you this week from Joe Schlepper Stadium in Shakopee, one of four sites for the 2024 State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Nestled in the shadows of 169, the park features seats from the Metrodome and even concrete from the old Metropolitan Stadium. 2024 marks the fourth year that Shakopee has hosted at least a part of the action. They'll be the main site in two years. The opener at Schlepper Field on Friday night saw the first homer of the tournament. Meesville's Ben Vujovic sends Harrison Blum's offering towards Highway 169, a two-run homer for the Mud Hens, and they built a big lead on Minneapolis. Meesville's Quinn Kruger kept the Mud Cats' bats in check. He strikes out six and picks up the seven-inning shutout. Meesville wins at 10-0 in seven. St. Michael and the Mud Hens of St. Paul mixing it up in Belle Plaine. Mud Hens up 1-0 with a runner on third. Ball hit to short, throw home is not in time to get Alex Matchy. St. Paul extending the lead. And they extended more in the seventh. Riley Schwellenbach grounds to short. Logan Grimm was at third. He hesitates and then heads home. The throw is off the mark. The Mud Hens scoring with small ball. And with the pitching of Brady Durkula, that was all they'd need. The Saints only get one hit and fan 13 times. These Mud Hens will meet the Meesville Mud Hens next week. Uh, my slider, uh, they, they, they couldn't hit the outside of the zone, so I was pounding that a lot and trying to get them off balance, not throwing the same pitch twice a lot, so trying to mix it up. Hopkins and Sobieski in Jordan. Rainy Saturday morning, but it didn't affect the Berries' bats. Brock Zimmer drives in two runs with this single to put Hopkins up 3-0. The Skis scored to tighten the game in the fifth, but Hopkins retaliated in the sixth. Tyler Wojciechowski rips it to right. It gets past the fielder, allowing two Berries to score. Hopkins goes on to the second round, winning 5-1. The final game of the weekend featured the Snowmen of North St. Paul against Victoria. Snowmen go ahead in the fourth. Will Huseman smokes the fastball to the deepest part of the park. It's an RBI double, 2-1 and SP. But the Snowmen lead melted in the final inning. Young Owen Stry belts one to left center. Fantastic diving effort by Adam Wall to save the game, but the ball lands. One run scores and the game is squared. Now with the bases loaded, Jeff Kressler bloops it to center field. Again, Wall charges, but again, it falls. The Vicks end up scoring seven runs in the ninth for an 8-2 come from behind win. Buckman, Minnesota, located a half hour north of St. Cloud, home of the Billy Goats and 300 other residents. Small in size, but big in baseball. They're no stranger to the final four. The Webster Sox wanting to halt a Billy Gilt run in the opening round and they get the opening mark on the scoreboard. Augie Isaacson slashes the fastball to the gap. Pete Grassel scores for Webster. Next half inning, the Billy Goats get after it. Benjamin Toma is up with the bases loaded. Loaded no more. He brings in two runs to put the Goats up to stay. Toma takes care of business in the seventh. A monster three run homer. Billy Goats over Webster, eight to one. They get Fergus Falls next week. St. Bonnie's hasn't been to state for 35 years and they waste little time in having some tourney fun. First inning, Hawk and Headland mashes a pitch onto Park Street in Belle Plaine. One nothing Saints. Wanamingo answers in the first with a bomb of their own. Alex Roos and Homer straight down the left field line and it's one one. The Saints scored three in the fifth, and Hedlund added more to his stat line in the sixth. This two-run triple helps ice the win for St. Bonnie's. They down Wanamingo 9-4. Fun final game from the Minimet. Former Major Leaguer Mike Kingery coaching for Atwater. He has two kids on the team. The Chuckers hosting former twin Corey Koski and three of his kids on the Loretta Larks. Everyone getting involved. 
first, Josh Kingery in center takes away extra bases with the running and sliding catch in the gap. In the second inning, Caleb Koski gets a hold of a pitch and deposits it over the fence in left. Caleb is just 19. Loretto leads 1-0. Atwater bounces back with David Kingery drilling an RBI single to right, leveling this game at one, and it would stay there into extra innings. Loretto loaded the bases and Joshua Koski faced Josh Kingery and SPN Steve Thompson with the call. And hit him and it's over. He got hit by a pitch and that's it. A walk off hit by pitch and Loretto advances. A couple years ago we played them in 21 innings and we faced them and he got the best of that there so it was super nice <laughs> getting that hit by pitch and uh, winning in that one against Kingery. We thought it was going to be me, either they are going to walk Ty or something would happen and I'd, I'd get up there so it was fun, uh, nerves were going a little bit because he's a great pitcher but it was good in the end, got the win. Cold Spring and Purim matched up in a Class C first round game. Purim managed by NSPN.TV announcer Jason Groth. The Pirates' first trip to state in five years was shaky at times. They commit four errors, including this misplay at the bag at second that allowed Jordan New to score the opening run. The Rockies added two more runs in the eighth to seal Purim's fate. The Brady Leverinson drive to left barely stays fair, but it is a run scoring knock. Cold Spring moves on to win 4 0. Defense is playing good. I was just throwing strikes and filling up the zone, and they made all the plays behind me. There's still plenty coming up on amateur baseball today, including highlights and more stories from this historic stadium. Your scoreboard, video display, and sound system needs, please give Amy Electronics a call and let their 35 plus years of experience help elevate your game day atmosphere to the next level. Amy Electronics is a local Dactronics representative throughout Minnesota and can be reached at 952 941 9830. Amy Electronics is located in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, just off of Highway 169, Highway 212, and Interstate 494. Welcome back to Amateur Baseball Today, presented by the NBA. I'm Ryan Phelps. We're coming to you this week from Joe Schlepper Stadium here in Shakopee. And joining us now, Gary Schlepper, board member from the NBA and also manager of the Shakopee Indians. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. We've got uh, a crew all around us here still working up to the last minute. And I know it, it must take just a ton of effort from everybody to get a state tournament site like this. Oh, for sure. Like you said, we've been here all week and you know it's just one of those things that you maintain over years to keep it close and then when it's go time all of a sudden you get 15 20 people show up for four or five nights in a row and up until game time to make sure we're ready uh, do you have a gauge on how many volunteers and workers you have putting this event together this weekend oh i would guess there's probably 60 to 60 to 80 somewhere in there total for the weekend that'll be here and and there's probably a group of 10 to 15 of them that'll be here the full time. I was reading some of the history on your father, Joe Schlepper, the namesake of this stadium, and uh, played some town ball himself for farming and for Cold Spring through a perfect game, a no hitter for uh, Cold Spring back in the day. Those two teams are, are both here, uh, both playing this weekend. Yeah, he uh, played up in uh, the baseball hotbed up there in Stearns County, and we're very proud of that. And it's so we always have a special affiliation with the farming team and with Cold Spring just because of dad's past and playing baseball up there. And kind of the reason that we got involved in town ball was because of him and that. And I and, uh, wouldn't have it any other way. It's been great. And, and his name, along with his brothers, donned the, the farming stadium as well. Yep, uh, Schlepper Brothers Field up in Farmington is named after my dad and uh, my four uncles. So there's five of them that it's named after. So after and then this one's named after him. So pretty cool yeah, and he's got a long history your entire family has a long history in baseball uh, he was a longtime coach player activities director at Shakopee High School his name really entrenched in this baseball community yeah for sure it is you know and 
and like he would say, and we all agree with the same thing, it's like his name's on the stadium, but there are so many people that have made this happen, and it's not just our family. It's There are so many names I couldn't start naming them, and, and but there just it takes it takes the village, like they say, and there's a lot of people who have done a lot of work, and it wasn't just him, and he would tell you that, and we would tell you that. Gary Schlepper, MBA, Shakopee manager, thanks for joining us here today, and, and best of luck this weekend. Thank you. It'll be uh, it'll be fun as long as we get the rain away. It was dry at the Joe on Saturday night for these familiar faces with a new nickname. Call them what you will. Minnetonka swings a mighty mallet. 38-year-old Blaine Rutledge starts the scoring with the RBI single off the glove, plating Jared Vondersee. Tied at one in the fourth, Griffin Schneider sends a cold spring offering into orbit. The blast propelled the Monarchs to a 7-3 first round win and another day at State. Defending B champ Air Freight Unlimited taking on tourney newbie Centennial. And the champs come out of the gates in the second inning. Matt Ink slices a two run single to left center part of a three-run inning. In fact, Air Freight took a 4-0 lead. Centennial had a chance in the sixth against ace lefty Graham Lobsher, but Lobsher registers the threat-ending strikeout. Graham had 12. Centennial did show Lobsher to be human. They scored two in the seventh, but their first trip to state was a quick one. Air Freight advances 6-2. Stockman's Irish from South St. Paul taking on their neighbors from Egan. The Irish, one of the experts, picks to click. They jump out to a three-run advantage on the Joe Silversmith sharp single. Two score on the bases loaded situation, the Irish seemingly in control. But the Bandits find a way to pilfer the lead. Down 4-3 with two outs in the ninth. Josh Sharp pulls the ball to left field. That is going to get the tying run across. Their flair for the dramatic was just beginning. Next pitch, Griffin Fenske, he's only 19, but he delivers like a veteran. The go-ahead single to right gives the Bandits their first lead of the game. All this with two outs in the ninth. Egan knocks off Stockman's, advancing to round two. 2022 Class B champ Rochester did some crushing against the Minneapolis Angels. Leading 5-1 in the fifth, leadoff hitter Logan Milleen pulls the pitch way deep and way gone, ending up near the old Green Isle School. Next inning, another lefty leading off and another ball that does not stay in Irish yard. Hayden Brown with the blast. The Rochester Royals will be a force in this tournament. They beat the Angels 11-1. It was an emotional summer in southern Minnesota. One town hit especially hard was Waterville, and not just by flooding. A dear member of their baseball family, Shane Selner, died suddenly in June, leaving behind a young wife and two sons. Shane's memory has helped buoy the team during this trying time. Shane's brother, Luke, began the Indians' day with a beauty of a base hit to the gap in right center. Bladen Bartle races home from first. In the fourth, Waterville connects again. Dalton Gross with the moonshot into the Green Isle ground crew beyond the fence in left. And then watch this fundamental handling of the bat by Ethan Bartle, the beautiful drag bunt that scores another run. Waterville is inspired and they beat Morris 9-1. Uh, winning a state tournament game is, is uh, exciting enough um, of its own, but it's, you know, bittersweet, you know, because uh, Shane should be here and uh, but we do this for him. Royals and Cubs in a first round matchup. Not KC in Chicago, but Richmond and Cortland. Richmond takes the lead in the first on a bullet to center by Cole Schmitz, RBI double. In the third, Cortland started crushing. How about this cut by Noah Drill? A blast into the Green Isle night. The Cubs never trailed after that swing. They advance on with a 10-5 win over Richmond. To the Minimet and the Black Sox of Carver doing all their dancing in the fifth inning against Piers. With two on, Ryan Kloster crushes a pitch that actually hits the top of the right field fence an inch from a home run. Instead, it's a run scoring double. Next up is Bailey Mells, and the St. Mary's grad fires it to left field. That will bring home two, including Kloster. They added another run in the inning, and those four runs held up. 
Carver beats Piers 4 to 1. Runs were in short supply at the Minimet on Sunday, especially in the game between Jackson and St. Joseph's. But the Joes got every bit of offense they needed on the two-run clout to right by Tanner Stoller. The Joes rode the right arm of Joe Atkinson. Appropriately enough, Atkinson struck out nine and gave up only one hit. And he fielded his position, although not so gracefully. Slipping on the grounder between the mound and first, Atkinson still gets the out. He sets down 18 Jackson batters in a row. Joe and Joes win 2-0. We're halfway through this one on amateur baseball today, but who's keeping score? I'll tell you who. And she's been at it for 50 years. Hold it down in the Bronx. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Check this. Ain't no act, baby. I'm trying to win, so every day I go win, baby. Yeah. If you want it. Roll that back. Are you looking for a cost-effective way to improve your infield playing surface? Meet Field Saver. Our Field Saver process is a cost-effective alternative to remove and replace. We'll test your current AgLime infield, identify the right Field Saver custom amendment, and blend the material into your existing infield. Field Saver is trusted by the St. Saint Paul Saints. Visit DuraEdge online to learn more about the Field Saver process and get in touch with a field expert in your area. Amateur Baseball Today is brought to you by the Minnesota Baseball Association and its partners. Beacon Athletics, the ultimate ball field resource. Rawlings, the official ball of the state tournament. And DuraEdge, engineered soils. The difference is in the dirt. Coming to you from Joe Schlepper Stadium in Shakopee, I'm Ryan Phelps. It takes many things to build a great ball club. You need pitchers, hitters, concession stand workers, and even a great scorekeeper. Our own Justin Barrientos has more. If you're familiar with the full version of the baseball anthem, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, you'll know that the main character in the song is a baseball-loving woman named Katie Casey. But for Union Hill Baseball, for almost 50 years, Katie is Rena. As a kid, I grew up, um, I mean, we lived on a farm. My dad would hit ball, fly balls to us, and um, we'd listen to the radio, games on the radio, and I would have a piece of paper, and I would write down their whole lineup, and then I would write down what they did when they came to bat. I mean, I always liked baseball. I ended up you know, going to a, the first state tournament game that Union Hill was in. I went to that with someone else that I knew. He had been drafted by the Union Hill team, and after that game was played, I met the boy, my now husband. <laughs> So I've been to all the Union Hill State Tournament games. Um, his parents, or no, his uncles, used to keep the book for the Union Hill team when he was playing. And one Sunday they couldn't, and I was sitting in the stands with a clipboard and a piece of paper and <laughs> keeping track of what they were doing. And he just says, would you want to come in and keep the book? And that's kind of how it went. I always wanted a large family, and I got it. They still wanted me to keep doing it, so... As long as they keep wanting me to do it, I'm, I'm willing. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, the, the guys are just, they're, they're great. They're great. I, mean, I don't talk to them a lot, but if they need something or like give them something, they're just so grateful. And um, I mean, they kind of stay at one end, and they, they're trying to stay out of my way, and I'm trying to stay out of their way. I just try and help wherever I can to make it easier for them. I have to really, I have to concentrate and, and watch, and I have to write it down, but sometimes as I'm writing about the home run or something, I'm squealing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I mean, definitely, or I'm just, you know, the, the biggest grin sometimes, but, uh, and then I feel so bad if somebody, you know, strikes out or, you know, if they have an error or something, you just, just feel so bad. Just the guys, just the guys being in there and laughing and, you know, and getting along and pushing around and, I mean, they take it seriously, but still, they're, they they joke around. And, yeah, I, it's just it's just a, a good, happy place to be. For amateur baseball today, I'm Justin Barrientos, NSPN.TV. Thanks, JB. Union Hills' first opponent was St. Peter. 
The Saints wasted little time in scoring in their first tourney appearance in seven years. Second batter of the game, Cody Booker with the base hit to right center. Booker gets the RBI, but was also thrown out at second. Saints led this one until the third. That's when the Bulldog bats wake up. Will Bush delivers this base knock, plating two Union Hill runners to give the squad their first lead. A couple batters later, Nate Lee turns on the curveball. This drive finds the Ivy in left field. Two more Bulldogs cross the plate. Union Hill scores nine against St. Peter to win their first game at State since 2020. Defending C champion Maple Lake ran into a tough farming flame squad. In the second, Tyler Schrader lines a pitch that nicks the glove of pitcher Hunter Molichek. It's a single to center scoring Robert Schlepper. Flames on the board. Now in the seventh, Farming builds on a 2-0 lead with Ethan Navertil's long drive to right, the solo home run part of a big win for the Flames, and the end of Maple Lake's title defense. 4-1 Farming wins. Niswa and Princeton from the mini Met. No score into the fifth. Two on for Niswa. That is until Aaron Jenkins hooks the pitch right down the left field line. Both runners have lots of time to round the bases and head home. Those two runs were enough. That's because Lightning drafty Preston Rochelow from Piers was dealing. He got the start and with defense like this from shortstop Chris Peterson, Preston was able to get the finish. The complete game is a ground out to first. Nate Duchesne fields and scoops to Rochelow. Niswa won this tournament in 2022. They shut out Princeton for nothing. 2017 champ, the Raymond Rockets found themselves getting no hit into the sixth by Springfield's Jordan Milbreth. That changed in the sixth. Caleb Dimerson slices the offering down the line. The runner scores easily to tie the game. Next inning was all Raymond. Five straight hits, including four doubles. Another one here from Dittmerson. The Rockets blast off late. They down Springfield 10-1. Lions Pub was the top seed in the Class B tourney last year, but made an early exit in round one. They plan to cook up something new for the menu this time around. Lions Pub found themselves in a sticky spot again as Newmarket built a three-run lead, mainly on the bat of Alex Barrett. The Winona State Slugger had four hits on the game and three RBIs. Midway through, it looked like Lions Pub was in trouble. But the Muskies had issues in the seventh. They couldn't throw strikes. Three Lions Pub runs scored on walks and a fourth on this wild pitch. And the Warriors rally back to lead. Newmarket had a chance to tie it in the eighth, but Nate Shoemaker picked up two big strikeouts with runners on second and third to help Lions Pub avoid the upset Warriors win, 6-5. Ninth inning heroics, the theme for our final Class B games on Saturday. The Moorhead Mudcats down to their final three outs against Baseball 365 when Isaac Henkemeyer Howe delivers the shot to left. Sprinting around the bases is Thomas Horan. He scores the equalizer. We are tied at one. Two outs in the inning, bases loaded, and the pitch gets away. Matt Samuelson charges home from third. The Mudcats of Moorhead score two in the ninth and win their first ever state tournament game. Back and forth game between the Loggers of Stillwater and the Burnsville Bobcats. The Loggers first two runs driven in by Austin Buck. This one a triple past the center fielder, putting Stillwater ahead. Game was tied at four in the seventh. Burnsville's Andrew Hansen spearheading a three-run seventh. Two with a towering drive over the fence in center. The Bobcats advance on to the final 16, 7-4 over Stillwater. To Green Isle, where Highland Park and Andover were matched up in a 3-2 game in the eighth. That's when the Aces defense lets him down. HP's Corey Ryder strokes his second single of the game. The misplay in center field allows the run to trot home, and the Beavers lead 4-2. Two outs in the inning, and it should be over with Dylan Gaussman's pop to right. Another error, a damaging two-run mistake. Highland Park scores four in the inning, and they beat Andover 7-2. We've got one more at bat here on Amateur Baseball today. When we return, a look at the rest of the highlights and a listen to our calls of the week. 
Goosebumps. You remember the ones you got the first time your kids stepped up to the plate? There's nothing like the thrill of youth sports or school sports, especially when you're playing on a beautiful field that makes you feel like a real pro. Kids and grown-ups alike make memories and learn lessons that will last a lifetime when they're playing on the sporting spaces we create. Beacon Athletics is making a difference by creating the best and safest playing fields possible. MaxBat is proud to support the Minnesota Baseball Association as we are the official wood bat. We take great pride in producing high quality wood bats for professional, amateur, and youth baseball players worldwide. At MaxBat, our main focus is quality, customer service, and quick turnaround time. All Max Bats are created using meticulous hand craftsmanship and engineering in our state-of-the-art facility in the heart of Town Ball Country, Bruton, Minnesota. We want to thank you for your continued support and for making us the leading wood bat brand in Minnesota. Waconia has played host to the last three state tournaments and the team has tallied a few wins along the way. They made it to the Sweet 16 in 23. This year they bring John Bezdecek to the hill and the lefty looms large for the Lakers. Bezdecek made his mark early in his first state game. He quickly sets down Hanska's first three batters and strikeouts were plentiful. Hanska's best swing of the night was their only hit in the first five innings. Tanner Olson drives one deep to left center that falls right in between the two converging glovemen. Ends up being a double, but Olson would end up getting picked off at second. Waconia waited until the third to start inflicting their offensive punishment. With two outs and two on, Max Kallenberg drives it to the base of the wall and left. Two runs score. The Lakers got five in all in the third. They win it in seven innings, 10 zip. John Bezdecek struck out 13 and talked about the win afterwards. I mean, just kind of keeping them on their toes, mixing things up. Um, I think that was kind of the key for tonight. Back to Bell playing for Laverne and Kimball, and the best performance by a player named Shugs, as in Shugs Hannon. He drives this pitch to the Ivy in left center. It was ruled a ground rule double, scoring one of three runs in the second inning for the Kimball Express. More from Shugs and the Express. He goes to right field this time. Great effort by the fielder, but the ball lands safely. Two more runs scored. Shugs heads to third base. Kimball scores seven early runs all with two outs. Kimball starter Ben Johnson pitched eight scoreless. 10 zip, Kimball beats Laverne. The Bemidji Blue Ox wasted little time in their matchup with Litchfield. First inning, they played two. The first coming on DH, Sam Calber's base knocked to right field. Mitch Hendricks streaks home. The Ox are running. The Blues of Litchfield battled back. Jacob Jones appears to hit into a tailor-made double play, but the throw to first is too high. Andrew Locke scores, and Litchfield is back within a run. I said the Ox were running. They were also stealing. Cody Rutledge steals home in the eighth. The gutsy play sealed the deal. Bemidji takes it four to two. Last game of the weekend at Belle Plaine had the Madison Mallard spot the Lesseur Braves a three-run lead but gobble it back up in the fourth. 36-year-old Avon Kells picks up two runs batted in with this swing, and they are squared at three. Lesseur just seven miles down the road from Belle Plain, and Tyler Pengilly launches this one a half mile down the road. Solo homer, Pengilly's third hit of the game. Bryce Novak helps spur a four-run eighth inning for Lesseur. Two RBI on this swing, Bryce is one of the all-time best from Gustavus Adolphus. The Braves making the most of their first trip to state in 20 years. They beat Madison 10-4. Class B action from Shakopee. The Logators of Champlin Park hopped on the hops of St. Paul, scoring first on a gappa from Clark Peterson, showing speed from first and scoring his former gopher punter Luke Ryersey. After a brief lead by the hops, Champlin scored four in the fourth without a hit, then added on in the fifth. Lefty Jack Pooter goes the opposite way to bring home two more low gators. They advance to the Sweet 16 with a 12-2 win over the Hops. The Chaska Cubs led the Hogs of St. Anthony 6-3 in the ninth, but the Hogs would not go to slaughter. Bennett Wiggins base hit to right scores one run, and the Hogs were down by one run. 
After a base is loaded, hit batter tied the game. Ryan Bernardi unties it with a two-run knock to right. In all, St. Anthony scores eight runs in the ninth inning for an improbable rally. 11-6 the final, tough inning for the Cubs. Two perennial powers, Dundas and St. Louis Park matching up, but the power belonged to the boys from SLP. Chris Odegaard hits the ball so hard, the camera went out of focus. Over the scoreboard and left, and the Orioles led 6-1. Brendan Schmall might have hit this pitch further. No sight of it in right field. The Orioles score 12 unanswered runs and move on in the brackets with a 15-5 victory. It took extra baseball between the Elko Express and the Minneapolis Cobras. Cobras were down three runs early, but this flared single to left by Ray Rosenstein with two outs in the ninth even the game up. The Cobras always have a never say die attitude. Rosenstein comes back up in the 10th with a runner on third and he delivers the game winner. Not hit hard, but hard enough. The Cobras knock out Elko in dramatic fashion. Let's hear from the hero. Um, two strike approach, widen the stance. You know, tried to go the other way, got a fastball down the middle and just took it with it. Um, and, you know, results. So, yeah, it was awesome. Awesome moment. First walk off ever. Let's take a look at the updated brackets starting in C. Cold Spring taking on the Brewers Friday night in Jordan. We've got Loretto versus Sox Center. St. Bonnie takes on New Walm and Buckman versus Fergus Falls. Up next, Raymond takes on Young America, Union Hill versus Clinton. Farming battles Fairmont, and it's Nisswa taking on Sartell. More sea ball coming up this weekend. Waterville versus Red Wing, Cortland takes on Isani, St. Joseph draws Buffalo, and it's Carver versus Watkins. And finally, Lesseur gets Bird Island, Kimball versus Foley, Bemidji versus New York Mills, and Waconia takes on Montgomery. On to the B brackets, Saturday in Jordan. We've got Champlin Park versus the Minneapolis Cobras and St. Louis Park versus St. Anthony. In Green Isle, the Hopkins Berries versus the Victoria Vicks and a battle of the Mud Hens, St. Paul versus Meesville. In Belle Plaine on Saturday, Rochester draws Air Freight and it's Minnetonka versus Egan. And on Sunday in Green Isle, Highland Park versus Lions Pub and Moorhead battles Burnsville. If you can't make it out to the ballpark, you can catch all the highlights right here on Amateur Baseball Today. You can also watch all the games on NSPN.TV. Here are some of our best calls from round one. Or NSPN.TV, the Neighborhood Sports Network. High fly ball to center field. Muster going back to the center field fence. It's gone! A home run! And Barrett has made it a one-run game at the top of the ninth. His fourth hit of the night. Never seen that before. Here's the pitch, and that's a line and a third, and a diving stop by Toma. What a play. Oh, Belial hit it right on the screws, and Toma, with a dive, is able to make the catch and retire the side. A sparkling play there. Takes a quick look at first and then fires. Fly ball over the head of the shortstop. Oh, he made the play. Wow. Max Bourne with a jumping effort. That'll retire the side. I had already chopped it up to a base hit. Fort in the third, flew out to left in the fourth and popped back to the pitcher in the sixth. Hammer towards left center field. After it is Rusin and he will dive and make the catch. Hang a star on that play. Oh, here's the first pitch to Xander. Swung on, that's lifted into right field. Coming on, making the catch. Malachek gonna go, but he stops halfway. Now back to third, he's tag out. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Sits on this one, it's a line drive to left field, a diving catch, and a beautiful web gem. In left field for the Royals. An outstanding play, almost a mini snow cone. Webster, and the pitch. And is hit high and deep to left field. Agnes going back and he will watch it leave. A three run homer for Toma. And Buckman has busted this one wide open. It's now eight to one. 
1 0 delivery, hammer towards left field and deep. Baxter looks up, that ball is gone. Thanks for joining us, folks, from all of us here at NSPN.TV. Andy, Hannah, JB, and Brian. I'm Ryan Phelps. We'll see you back here next week for more Amateur Baseball Today, presented by the Minnesota Baseball Association. Hey, everything's okay. The boys are gonna play today.